Hello? 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 Huh? Huh? Oh! <laughs> hey guys! Uh, I'm just waiting for a phone call. Um, You know what? I'll be right with you. Hang on. Hey guys! And welcome back to another Hope Kids Online. You know, I have been sitting by the phone for like over an hour now, just waiting for a phone call. And it feels like I've been waiting forever and ever 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 and ever. The phone just won't ring. And I've been waiting for ages. And you know, that reminds me of today's story. Now, if you remember, we're still in the Joseph story. And do you remember what happened last time? That's right. Joseph was in the prison and he interpreted two people's dreams. It was the cupbearer and the bread maker. And remember, the cupbearer went back to work and Joseph said to the cupbearer, Hey, please remember me when you go back and see Pharaoh. But what happened? That's right. He forgot, didn't he? And Joseph was left waiting. Do you know how long Joseph had to wait? Well, we're about to find out in today's Hope Kids Online. It's been two years since the cupbearer went back to work in Pharaoh's palace. And it's been two years since he forgot about Joseph. And Joseph has carried on for the last two years looking after the prison, doing what he was doing and just hanging out with God. But now, two years later, Pharaoh had a dream. He dreamt that he was standing by the river Nile. And up from the river came seven fat cows. And they came up and they started eating the grass and they looked really healthy and really fat and really good to eat. But then, out of the river, came seven thin cows. And they didn't look so healthy. They looked a bit sick. And they came and they ate up the fat cows. But they didn't get fat. They stayed thin. And then <gasps> Pharaoh woke up and he stirred in bed and he was like, what a weird dream. <sighs> oh, well, <clears throat> never mind. Back to sleep. <sighs> and so that's what he did. He just rolled over and went back to sleep. But then he had another dream. And in this dream, he saw a stalk of wheat. And on the stalk of wheat grew seven heads of grain. And they were really good ones. They were really yummy, tasty looking ones. But then, next to those, grew another seven heads of grain. And they didn't look so good. They were yucky and withered and horrible. But the seven bad ones ate up the seven good ones. And once they'd eaten them, they still looked really bad and really yucky. Pharaoh woke up and was like, that was a crazy dream. No more cheese before bed. And the next morning, Pharaoh got up and he was still really worried about his dreams. So he called all of his advisors, all the smart people in all of Egypt to come and to speak with him. And he said, these were my dreams. Somebody tell me what they mean. But nobody could. Not a single one. They all looked at each other and they were confused. And they were like, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not a clue. Not a clue. And then the cupbearer remembered Joseph. 
And he goes to Pharaoh and he says, Pharaoh, there is a man that I met two years ago when I was in prison. And I had a dream and the baker had a dream. And they both meant something, but we didn't know what they meant. And this man, Joseph, he told us what the dreams meant. He called for Joseph. He went, he got cleaned up because he'd been in prison for a long time. And then he came and stood before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, these are my dreams. Can you tell me what they mean? And what did Joseph say? Well, Joseph said, no, I can't tell you what your dreams mean. But God can tell you and I'm happy to ask God for you. So Pharaoh told Joseph about his dreams. And right away, God told Joseph what they were about. And Joseph said, Pharaoh, what's going to happen is there's going to be seven years in Egypt where there's going to be so much food, we're not going to know what to do with it. But once those seven years are over, all the food is going to disappear. But Pharaoh, what you should do is put someone in charge of the food. So during the seven good years, somebody can collect all the food together, keep a record of where it's all going, store it up in special places, so that when the seven years of famine come, we'll be ready for it and we can help save the whole kingdom of Egypt. Well, Pharaoh was super impressed with Joseph. And so Pharaoh made a decision. He said, Joseph, you are going to be that man. You are going to be the man who's in charge of all of that stuff. And not only are you going to be in charge, but I'm going to make you second in command of all of Egypt. So that's what happened. For the next seven years, Joseph went around doing a great, great job again of looking after Egypt. And after seven years of tons and tons of food, the crops started to die off. Food started to become scarce. There was less and less food for everybody. But Egypt was ready for the famine because God had told Joseph what to do. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? I think so. And guys, there is more story to come. It's not over yet. Next week, we're going to find out what happens during the seven years of famine. Now, I can't remember if I told you how old Joseph was way back in the beginning of our series. But just in case I didn't, Joseph was 17 when he had his first two dreams. And now, by the time he's become second in command of all of Egypt, he's now 30 years old. Which means it's been 13 years since Joseph had his first dreams. And 13 years later, they still haven't come true. And in those 13 years, we know that he has seen other people's dreams and he has seen their dreams coming true around him. We know of at least three, right? We know about the cupbearer, the baker and Pharaoh. And there may have been others, but we don't know. But we know at least there were three. And that must have been hard for Joseph. 13 years of seeing stuff going on around him, but not seeing his own dreams come true. And sometimes in life, that can happen to us, can't it? Sometimes we can really want something and it doesn't happen. And we can see good things happen to all the people around us, but just not for us. We can see other people's dreams coming true. We can see other people getting the things that they want and it's not happening for us. And sometimes we can get really disappointed with that, can't we? We can get really sad and be like, oh, I wish that was me. I've wanted this thing for such a long time. Or I've always wanted to go to that place or do that thing. And everyone else gets to go, but I don't. Well, oh, guys, Joseph had to wait 13 years and still nothing had come true. But, you know, Joseph didn't focus on that, did he? 
We know from the Bible that Joseph didn't focus on his dream, but he focused on the one behind his dream. He knew that God was the one who gave him his dream. And he knew that God always delivers. Joseph knew that if God had said this is going to happen, at some point it was going to happen. And that's our lesson for today. If God has said to you, this thing is going to happen for you, or I'm going to do this for you, then we can be confident that it's going to happen because God said so. And even though things might be happening for other people around us, which are really good, we can celebrate those things with those people because we know that we know that we know that God always delivers. Thank you so much for sending me in all those pictures. I wonder if you noticed mine. This week, what I'd like you to do is think about your favourite moment from Hope Kids Online. Maybe it was part of a story, maybe it was something we said, or maybe it's from the bloopers reel. Just pick your favourite moment from Hope Kids Online and you let me know what that was. And next week, what we're going to do is squish all those favourite moments together like a top 10 kind of list. Okay, so all the favourite moments that you can think of. You let me know what they are. Kids and adults. Adults, if you've got a favourite moment, you let me know. Just let me know what number episode or the title of the episode and roughly what happens in that clip. Okay, and I'll put them together for next week. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us for another Hope Kids Online. Next week is the final part of the Joseph story, so make sure you don't miss it. But until then, have a great week, and we'll see you for another Hope Kids Online. <gasps> the phone! <laughs> <clears throat> Hello? 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 The Bible tells us he was 17 years old, which to some of you, might sound really old and to some of us sounds really good I mean young make sure that you star flare that's the <clears throat> it's been two years since the cupbearer went back to work in Joseph's palace no it's not Joseph's palace it's Pharaoh's palace Pharaoh lives in the palace they become Joseph's palace but right now it's not okay Shush. It's been two whole years since Joseph. No, Joseph didn't go work there. The cupbearer went to Pharaoh's palace. That's the story. Stop making it up. Blah.